This video will demonstrate how to create a profit and loss statement using financial dimension sets, which allows you to select which main accounts, dimensions, or combinations of the two can appear on the P&L statement and in what order they should appear. A profit and loss statement is considered to be a financial statement. The objective of financial statements is to provide information about the financial position, performance, and changes in financial position of a company. So financial statements include not only a P&L statement, but typically include a balance sheet, a cash flow statement, and a statement of changes in owner's equity. So as a precursor to this video, please see the Generating Financial Statements video in order to understand how to create a basic financial statement, including the setup of row definitions, such as total sales and total cost of goods sold rows shown here, as well as the setup of column definitions like current year and prior year amount and additional various print and formatting options. So I'm going to build off this P&L statement that was created in that earlier video. Here you can see that we have a simple P&L defined, total sales, total cost of goods sold, and a calculation of the two to arrive at net income. For purposes of this video, I'm going to take this P&L statement and, and instead of the main account being used as the primary focus, we are going to create a departmental P&L statement in which department becomes the primary dimension focus. So I'll show department first, followed by the main account, which is considered the secondary dimension set, along with my current year and prior year columns as shown here. Okay, so let's take a look at the row definition used in this profit and loss, which was created by navigating to general ledger, setup, financial statement, row definition. I'm going to enlarge this window. And P&L is the row definition that was used. You can see here that the primary financial dimension set of account for the main account focus was used to construct this row structure. And the depth field shows two levels deep in the structure designer. If I click on structure designer button, I will see the details of the row structure. So here you can see what is a very simplified P&L, a total sales group, a total cost of goods sold group, and the sum of which is a net income calculation. And under each grouping, we have values specified for the respective dimension, or sales main accounts under the total sales group, and cost of goods sold main accounts under the total cost of goods sold group. As I mentioned earlier, this P&L row definition is two levels deep, so we start with a top node of a group, total sales, and the second level is the individual main accounts. So if I were to quickly review the setup with you, on the group row type, on the setup tab, you'll see that I have header and subtotal marked because I want this to appear as a header on my financial statement, and I want a subtotal on total sales. For the next row, which is a dimension type on the Setup tab, you can specify in the value list the actual main account, as I have shown here added to the trees, or you can build expressions using wildcards to mass generate authorized value combinations in the tree itself. You'll also notice that the invert sign is marked to show sales which naturally appears as a credit in the database as a positive on my financial statement. So that covers groups and dimension types. The last row type in my row defini definition is a calculation type. And on the setup tab is where you actually build a calculation expression. So the total sales and total cost of goods sold rows were dragged into the arguments available and then they were summed up to create this calculation expression to arrive at net income. Okay, and whenever you're in edit mode uh, in the structure designer, there is a special reports tab, which allows you to set up additional formatting options. So for net income, we have bold and italics, and we want to show a line break position before net income and after our total cost of goods sold section. So there's nothing more I need to do to change this row definition. I'm going to close out of the form. 
The next step after you create row definitions is to create a column definition. Now we had created a P&L column definition under general ledger, setup, financial statement, financial statement. If I scroll down here, we had set up profit and loss. Note that it has a primary dimension set of main account and three columns, account, current year amount, and prior year amount. So in order to create a departmental P&L, we need to make one small modification to our column design, and that is to add a column to display department. So I am going to copy this P&L, click on copy. I'm going to change the name to P&L2, say OK. And if I scroll to the bottom, I can change my description on this to Departmental Profit and Loss Statement. And down below, I want to add a new column for Department, so I'm going to click on Add. And I'm going to use the up arrow to move it to the top and to be my first column. So I will have department, account, current year amount, and prior amount. I also want to uh, increase the length of my column width here. So for department, I'm going to say 15 characters. And let me check account here. Uh, we have 30, and that is fine. So the next thing I need to do is change the column type on my department. Uh, it will be my primary dimension set code, but I'm going to change it to display the primary dimension set name. And then for the main account, this is going to be my secondary focus or dimension, and I'm also going to change that to name secondary dimension set name in this case. On the Setup tab, I likewise need to change my primary and secondary dimension sets. So my primary will be Department, Let's scroll up here. My secondary dimension set will be Main Account. And then my row definition will also be P&L, but I need to move that now to my secondary dimension set. So for my main account, I want to show the rows that I've defined in my P&L row definition. So again, total sales, total cost of goods sold, and net income. Okay, so once we're done uh, here, uh, we have completed our column setup. I can close out of this form, and we are now ready to generate the departmental P&L. I go to Reports, Transactions, Financial Statement. I'm going to select the Profit and Loss Statement we just created, P&L 2. You'll notice everything defaults in as I had it set up. Uh, primary dimension set department, secondary dimension set is account with a filter on the row definition in our P&L. I am going to um, output to Microsoft Excel, which is the default output type in Dynamics AX 2012. But you'll notice it is also possible to print uh, to an XBRL financial statement as well as export to file. I'll leave it at Microsoft Excel. At the Save To tab, you would navigate to your file and press OK to generate the financial statement. And as you can see, I have a departmental profit and loss statement. If I scroll down, I have page breaks. I have my sales department followed by a P&L and my second department retail followed by a P&L. So this is one way to create a departmental P&L. Uh, another way is to create a combined financial dimension focus where my primary financial dimension set includes both department and main account. So let's take a look at the setup of financial dimension sets. I'm going to close out of this financial statement and we go to general ledger, setup, Financial Dimensions, Financial Dimension Sets. So the P&L row definition we just saw used the ACC Financial Dimension Set uh, for main account, which was selected from the Available Financial Dimensions pane and included as a dimension focus in the Selected Financial Dimensions pane. 
But in addition to ACC, you can see that I have various dimension sets that combines dimensions with other dimensions and remain accounts. And I could create a departmental PL using the department and main account financial dimension set. So over here you can see, and this, the order is very important, that when I selected available financial dimensions, I brought them over in the order I want them to appear. So primary being department on top, followed by a main account focus. So let's take a look at a financial statement that has been created using the DEP plus ACC financial dimension set. I'm going to close here and navigate to general ledger, set up, financial statement, row definition. Here you can see I have department P&L, which uses the combined dimension set, department plus ACC. And if I click on the structure designer button, we'll go to the uh, row level detail. Now you will see two tabs here, one for main accounts and one for financial dimensions uh, or departments in my Contoso database here. And using these dimensions, I can build out my row structure here on the left. In this example, the department dimensions, sales and retail departments have been placed at the top nodes in my tree. And underneath these nodes, I have added reference to the P&L row definitions we looked at earlier. This one is a type of structure. And a structure row type allows you to map one row to another row that has already be, been created. So on the Setup tab, I took the P&L row definition we looked at, and I have linked it to the individual branches. So I have a link to total sales, total cost of goods sold, and to net income. And I have done the same for the retail department. So that's it. This is using a combined department account focus. I've put the departments at the top of my node, and I've simply linked another row structure, row definition, for my, my P&L format. I'm going to close this form, and I can run my financial statement. Okay. And before I do that, I'll just show you how I mapped that row to the column setup. So general ledger, setup, financial statement, financial statement. I have my departmental P&L setup. Again, I have a primary dimension set of department and a co uh, main account. And as far as my column types, because I have a single primary dimension set, I'm going to have one column for description, and my column type will be the primary dimension set definition name. On the Setup tab, it's the same. Primary dimension set is department plus account, and the row definition I just showed you has been mapped, department P&L. And with that, we are ready to run the financial statement. I will click Close, go to Reports, Transactions, Financial Statement. I'm going to select my departmental P&L. And I am going to click OK. And here you see another example of a departmental P&L, a P&L for the sales department, as well as my retail department. And that concludes this video of how to create a profit and loss statement by dimension. Thank you.